This is a VHS-C videotape. In 2003, despite being about 20 years old at the time and an antiquated analog system, it was still one of the most popular formats used by camcorders. At the time, these tapes cost about $5 each. And also in 2003, for $1,000, you could get an entire digital DVD quality video camera that was actually slightly smaller than a VHS-C videotape. This is the Panasonic D-Snap camcorder, model SVAV100. And yes, it really is a fully functional DVD quality camcorder that was available in 2003 for $1,000. Some articles at the time over-enthusiastically called it a credit card sized camcorder, but that would need to be an awfully tall stack of credit cards. And what's really revolutionary is the format it uses. Because at the time in 2003, Sony's smallest camcorders recorded onto micro MV videotapes, while this thing records onto SD cards. First, a quick look at the features of this camcorder, many of which would remain uncommon on video cameras of its size for years to come. First of all, 10 times optical zoom with electronic image stabilization, which actually works really well. A stereo microphone, a very uncommon feature on this size of camera. Flip out two and a half inch LCD, which also can be flipped around to face the front. And notice here, input source, camera or line. That's right, you can use this to do video capture from an external composite video source. And you notice these controls are at a weird 45 degree angle. That's because Panasonic designed them to be used either when the camcorder is being used vertically to record video or when it's positioned horizontally to play back video. And yes, it even includes a remote control. On this side is where the battery goes. It's a flat lithium-ion battery. I have two of these original Panasonic batteries and they both hold a good charge. On the front there is a multi-function jack which serves as headphone output for live monitoring of recording as well as listening to playback of clips you recorded. An AV input and an AV output. There's the USB port and under this one is a DC power input for charging the battery. And speaking of the power supply, it's about the same size as the camcorder itself. Unfortunately, there's no tripod mount, but it has a nice flat surface on the bottom, so you can leave it with the LCD panel closed and use it to record. You won't be able to see what you're recording, but it will still record even with the LCD closed. Aside from only supporting a 4x3 aspect ratio, because in 2003 very few people had widescreen TVs, the video and audio quality of this camcorder is equally as good, if not better than, the standard definition camcorders that Panasonic was selling as late as 2010. I have to talk over this clip because I had music playing on my car radio when I was recording it, but I happened to see this bright yellow motor trike on the highway, so I pulled out the D-snap and started recording it. You can see even when I zoomed it in to get a closer look, the electronic image stabilization did an excellent job. If anybody can identify this motor trike, please leave a comment telling me its make and model. Here's some indoor test footage from the Panasonic D-Snap camcorder recorded under bright lighting. And how about that for a very 1970s headphones box? 
There's the Sony Handycam I used to record the first part of this video. I think this camcorder probably gives it a run for its money in terms of video and audio quality, even though the Handycam is several years newer. Speaking of Sony, it wasn't until 2006 that they finally saw the light and released their first camcorder that did not record onto videotapes or discs. It was this model here, the DCR SR100, which also cost a thousand dollars and it recorded onto a built-in hard drive. So even in 2006, Sony was still not on board with the idea of recording onto solid-state flash memory storage. And here's how it does under what I would consider to be typical indoor lighting. Not fantastic, but pretty good for a standard definition camcorder of 2003. I have no idea what kind of crazy music Jazz 88 is playing right now. So if this was back in 2008 when YouTube did not yet support widescreen or high definition, I would have been thrilled to use this as my camcorder. Here it is connected to my Sega Genesis and capturing Sonic the Hedgehog in stereo. But one limitation is that it will not let you do video capture from sources that are macrovision encoded. If you try, it just beeps and shows copy inhibited on the screen. But you can at least watch the movie even if you can't capture it. It can also take still photos. The maximum resolution is only 640 by 480, but that was normal for standard definition camcorders. So in 2003, for such a small and light camcorder, the Panasonic D-Snap has excellent video and audio quality and very useful video capture capability. In fact, there will be nothing else like it for years to come. The real reason why it was not a success in 2003 was not because of anything wrong with the camera itself. It's because SD card technology was not advanced enough yet to make effective use of it. When this camcorder was released in October 2003, it included a 512 megabyte SD card, which on its own had a retail price of $349, and at the highest quality setting of this camcorder, it could record about 10 minutes of video. And with this one gigabyte card, which didn't even exist yet when this camcorder was first introduced, I can record 21 minutes of video at the highest quality setting. In fact, this was so early for recording video onto SD cards that the currently available SD cards at the time did not have a high enough data transfer rate to record DVD quality video onto them. And the SDHC format and the class system of speed ratings was not introduced until 2006. So Panasonic had to invent their own proprietary high speed format for SD cards. And unfortunately, these proprietary high-speed Panasonic SD cards are not forwards compatible with the newer industry standard higher speed SD cards like this one. So if I pop this two gigabyte Fujifilm card into the camcorder, it complains that this card cannot record in MPEG-2 mode which limits us to much lower resolution video. It does say if the card was working, we would get 43 minutes of recording time, but if I try to press the record button, it just complains and gives the error message again. So in order to use this camcorder at its highest quality setting, you have to use these proprietary 
high-speed Panasonic cards. Now in 2005, Panasonic introduced what they called Pro High-Speed SD cards, but I don't know if they are compatible with this camcorder. I was not able to find any of those. It took me quite a while just to find this one gigabyte high-speed Panasonic card. Another problem is that in 2003, most computers and video editors did not yet support the MPEG-2 video files that this camera records, especially since it uses a weird MOD file extension, not to be confused with the Amiga Music files. In this case, it stands for Movie on Disk, but you can just rename those to MPG, and they should work fine in any media player or video editor program that supports MPEG-2 video. Or you can use the SD copy program that I did a video about back in 2009 to automate the process. So that's the pocket-sized Panasonic D-Snap SVAV100 camcorder from 2003, a product which was just too far ahead of its time. In fact, I think if it had been released around 2006, when industry standard higher capacity SDHC cards were available, and when YouTube was starting to make the use of these small video cameras much more popular, I think it would have been a much better success.